Welcome to lesson 9.2 electrochemical cells. This is where we'll look at galvanic and electrolytic cells. So first of all voltaic or galvanic cells or batteries. Let's have a look at the comparison between the two. They can be quite confusing because one is producing electricity and one is using electricity. Okay so first of all they both have a conductive medium. They have two electrodes reduction at the cathode. Uh, that's one of the key points to remember. Uh, so a red cat uh, and oxidation at the anode and ox. I think this one's the most useful to remember. And so what's confusing, the anode and cathode are, are labeled positive and negative. We'll look at this in a second. Uh, this is not this is not a, a natural process, so we're using electrical energy to create chemical uh, chemical bonds and this one we're using the chemical sort of energy to create electrical energy uh, using the chemical bonds. And so for this one here, Delta G is less than zero, and uh, that means it's a natural, spontaneous process. Uh, and this one, the delta G is, is greater than zero, so it's not spontaneous. We're forcing it to occur. Uh, and this one has a salt bridge, uh, and that's to keep uh, the chemicals clean. Okay, so let's have a look at the voltaic cell, the galvanic cell. This is what you're trying to get. Uh, and how do we, if you're asked to draw it, you need to make it look like this. How do we get to that? So first of all, we draw two beakers and we draw the salt bridge. That will keep the solutions clean. And so they will run for a bit longer. Uh, when you draw in the electrodes, make sure the wire, make sure the electrode is going into the solution and the wire is not. So you're not getting iron or copper reacting here or some other thing that you don't want to react. Uh, and then we can draw out the equations. Now, one of them will be oxidized, one of them will be reduced. Uh, because this is a natural reaction based on reactivity, uh, so it can be quite random. Uh, on this one I've put the oxidation on the left and the reduction on the right. That means the electrons come off. Uh, and so the electrons travel up through the wire and the, the charges are balanced by other ions uh, traveling through the salt bridge. Now uh, the good word to, word to remember is reduction is the cathode, so on the right is, is the reduction that's going on, so I've written cathode there, and on the left I've written anode. Uh, and because it's a natural process, the electrons are traveling up, so they're attracted to the positive, repelled by the negative. So we put the cathode as positive, and the anode as negative. Now that's the most confusing thing, because the positive and negative labeling will change with the electrolytic cell. All right, so the repulsion of electrons at the anode, so that must be negative, and attraction to the cathode, which is positive. So here is a specific example. You may be asked for this specific example. I would go to the data booklet, have a look at the one that is the most positive, uh, and that will be the one that, that works in that situation, whether it's a, a reduction table or an oxidation table. So if I look at the data table here, we see copper here is plus 0.34, and zinc is minus 0.76. So in this situation, that's not going to work. Uh, it's going to turn around, so the zinc is going to lose electrons. And so, and so as you can see here, the zinc has lost electrons. This was the more positive in this situation, so that was going to gain electrons. Moving on to the electrolytic cell now, and they're forcing a chemical reaction to occur. You need to be able to draw this diagram here. And so how do we draw that? So first of all, again, you draw your just one beaker this time. And make sure, again, the electrodes are in the water, but not the wire is not. So this time, instead of having a voltmeter to see what the voltage is, you're going to have a battery in there, and that battery is going to force the electrons through. Uh, and so, look, it's a not, not a natural process, so the positive is sucking the electrons up, and the negative uh, side of the, the cell there uh, is pushing down the electrons. Okay, so this the um, one of these will be negative because of that, and so the positive metal lines will be attracted and turned to solid metal. Uh, and so typically you get some sort of precipitate on the right hand side. Uh, and if there's a non-metal um, there, well the negative ions will be attracted uh, to the area that's getting uh, devoid of electrons. And so typically that often forms uh, some sort of gas like oxygen or, or uh, some say halogen gas like chlorine. Uh, so what you have here, uh, then you can then label that once positive and negative because the battery is forcing that way through. You can show the electrons travel. Uh, you can see that on the right hand side 
it is gaining electrons uh, and so it has a uh, reduction is occurring there and so that's the cathode reduction occurs at the cathodes you can label the other one the anode and then you have the finished product you can also use this to detect for for connectivity uh, so you don't want the thing to react so you need to use an uh, inert electrodes of either platinum or graphite and you can use the data booklet in high level as I showed you before to basically to get some more basic uh, some more substantial information but as standard level they're not going to ask you to do calculations so just realize uh, some rules of thumbs that are going to help you uh, if the metal is high in the reactivity table it's already in a, in a in a stable form and it's very reactive it's not going to turn back to sodium it'll just blow up uh, so something else is more likely to react so uh, this the dissociation of water uh, may end up causing uh, more one of these to react to either give off hydrogen gas or oxygen gas so that's far more likely to to occur uh, same with this if, if it's low on the reactivity table well it wasn't very happy being an iron anyway uh, so it's very happy to go back to being uh, a, a solid metal. Uh, halides are a little bit more trickier. If it's concentrated then you'll get it. Uh, it's getting a little bit messy, start to look like organic chemistry. Uh, these, these things are fairly stable, the polyatomic ions, and so you're not likely to get those to react. It's far more likely that the oxygen will come off from the dissociation of the water. So that's kind of quite helpful in guessing what's going to come off in uh, electrolysis. No, it's going to be messy. Uh, even if it is concentrated here, you're going to get a, a situation where you're going to get, uh, it, it's going to react to the point where the concentration is decreased, so you're going to start getting some other products. Here's a specific example. Hopefully you'll get something that's quite simple. They do, simple is getting rid of the aqueous. So getting, if it's not in water, uh, then you're going to have, uh, you don't have to worry about oxygen or hydrogen. You're just going to get uh, the pure substances coming off.